and raise your hand. Kareem. Hey, hey, Mike. Um, let's, I guess, start with the defensive effort a little bit, you know, much different than Saturday. Could you um, just kind of detail a little bit of what changed? Uh, we played harder uh, for longer periods of time. Um, our ball pressure was better. Um, I thought Tina did a terrific job on McCowan and she got good help uh, when McCowan uh, kind of got herself in the middle of the lane. We, we tried to send you know, some traffic into the lane, but without, you know, we didn't go all out double teams. We just made it harder for, uh, I think our pressure uh, out on the perimeter made it a little bit tougher for them to get the ball to her too. Uh, so I think that was the start of it. Um, you know, we played without fouling much, even though there were some fouls called at us that I was, um, you know, a little bit concerned about. I, but we, but we didn't end up in the in the bonus very often uh, for them. Uh, they only got ten free throws. In general, the officials just let the game play. I mean, there weren't very many fouls called in general. Um, and you know, uh, I, I, you know, having Maisha have a couple of days of practice helped us, or a day of practice uh, helped us. Um, you know, we had good size in the lineup at the start. Um, and, you know, so I, I think that was the biggest thing about our defensive effort. And except for the first half, uh, we did, a, I think they only had one offensive rebound in the second half. Are you as impressed by what Tina's doing as we are right now? I mean, this is what, three straight games of 30 and she seems to be doing a little bit of everything inside and out. Yeah, I mean, she's in a pretty good comfort zone. Uh, she'll probably be mad at her three-point shooting tonight since she's been shooting it well. Um, but I think that, you know, she, I think she did a really good job of recognizing what we needed. You know, sometimes it was a post-up, sometimes it was a, a good screen for a guard. Uh, sometimes it was uh, facing up on the perimeter and, you know, kind of reading how they're defending a lot better. So, you know, and we tried to help her put her in positions where she could see where the help was coming from the last couple of games. And I think she's done a good job of reading the defense. Thank you. Jen. Well, thanks, Kareem, because I was just going to say how in response to Tina. So I'm glad you articulated that better than I did. Uh, coach, coach, I'll turn to the ball movement on offense. Um, you know, you and Eric have both talked about that. Did you like that better tonight or, or what did you see? On that? Way better. I mean, when we have 25 assists, obviously you have to have, make shots to have assists, but I thought that we played both sides of the floor better tonight. Uh, one of our goals was as many times as we could to try to, you know, penetrate one or two dribbles to draw two defenders so we could get ourselves some better open looks from the three point line. And I think it worked. I mean, I think Ariel Atkins and Leilani and Sydney Weiss all got good looks at threes. And we had other good looks. I mean, Maisha and Tina had good looks. Uh, they didn't go, uh, but we, I mean, they're wide open looks. And so, you know, a big, big thing is to try to, you know, make somebody over help against us so we get better looks. And so ball movement is a big part of that. And then with, with Maisha scoring in double figures, actually having a double, double. Yep. How big was that for you guys? Just, you know, you've talked the past couple of days about taking pressure off of other players. Um, yeah, and first of all, she things. takes pressure off of Tina uh, because she makes their post players play honest. And then, you know, she can play with any of our other post players. I mean, she and Erica were good together for a stretch. She and Teresa can play together. Uh, we didn't play Teresa much tonight because they're just a huge lineup, but there will be other games where it'll be her turn because of her shooting. Uh, I think that, um, you know, Mai's ball handling, I mean, we have, we have plays in now that allows her to handle the basketball, um, you know, in our transition. I mean, she had three assists tonight, uh, you know, and that, that's one more, you know, dimension to our offense that she adds. Thank you. Doug? Hey, Mike, I, I apologize if you were asked this already. But we talked about it last year in the bubble all the time. Is the one year anniversary of George Floyd's murder? I'm just curious. You guys talked about it as a team at all, or is it something that you guys still discuss? Uh, not so much today. I mean, we've talked in general about some things that are, you know, not only the anniversary, but it's it's been kind of put in front of us every day. I mean, our team is on the screen on almost every you know thing that they talk about athlete involvement from last summer. 
um, you know, between the Jacob Blake and the, and the George Floyd thing, I think that our players um, are very aware of it. Uh, we've had discussions lately, not specifically about that, about but things that we can do more of in our community uh, to, you know, uh, be involved in, in continue uh, what we started last summer, but actually now be physically in D.C. to do some of these things. Uh, and we're going to talk more about that over the next week or two. Um, but, you know, it wasn't a specific conversation necessarily today. It's kind of been an ongoing thing. Appreciate it, Mike. Yep. And last question to Tyler. Hey, Coach, sorry to change the tone a little bit, but for uh, you were talking about the defensive effort for you guys, especially early on. Uh, when Ariel Atkins came back into the game to start the second quarter, how much do you think was the energy that she provided kind of infectious to the rest of the team? Otherwise, she came in and she was diving for every ball, making everything happen. She then had those two offensive fouls yep. uh, called against her. So how much do you think? Sorry. No, I, I, I mean, I'm, I'll jump ahead here. I mean, I think her energy level in general, her and Natasha just on a daily basis uh, kind of jumpstart the defense out on top. And when, and when they're out front uh, putting pressure on the ball and chasing shooters off screens, it makes everybody's job a little bit easier. It's harder to throw the ball to the post. It's harder to run a good pick and roll. Uh, they did a good job um, in Ariel drawing the two charges basically because she pinned the ball on the sideline. She didn't let them get to the middle of the floor uh, in pick and roll coverages. And, you know, that's huge. Um, they just, you know, it sets a tone. Thank you. Thanks, Coach. You bet. All right, Kareem. Hey, hey, Tina, congratulations. Hey. Thanks. How much did um, the little bit of lineup tweak kind of help you out? Seems like there's a little bit more space. Obviously, Maisha can, you know, do the things that she does. Um, just curious how that kind of felt today, how that you think that impacted that end of the floor? Um, I think it was more so our mindset. You know, we, we had a great film session yesterday. Um, coach definitely added in some sets to keep the floor open and more spread, more middle pick and rolls to get Toss going downhill. Um, you know, it's going to take a, it took like a game for Maisha to get, get into her groove, but um, she definitely switched up, but it's definitely good to have Maisha in the lineup with her confidence, her energy, how aggressive she is, especially with Sid being able to space out the floor, but just how great of a shooter she is. So I think all in all, our mindset coming this game, knowing how important it was for us to get a win on this road, especially during versus this team. Now we know, you know, you've had to, um, we know the load that you've kind of had to carry this year and, you know, three straight 30 point games. Um, I know it's part of the circumstances, but it, are you also kind of out there going at it? Do you have a little bit of, um, I don't know what to call it, but are you kind of going, going out there, kind of looking to be uber aggressive and looking to put the, your game out there? Yeah, definitely. You know, every time I take the floor, I'm just trying to make a statement, you know, that I'm here, you know, uh, to not write me off. Um, I'm just trying to win games. You know, I have a goal. I just when I win a championship, you know, I have more years behind me than I do ahead of me. So I take every game um, personal. Uh, and, and I know my energy, how I come out does wonders for the team. You know, um, I wish I would have made shots the first game because they took McCowan out and, and it was hard for me to guard McCowan just with her strength, but it made it easier because I was making shots and, you know, they put Jantel on me, who's an experienced big and we've been going at it since we were like 12, 13. So um, I'm just thankful we came out with the win. Cool, cool, quick and easy, thank you. Jen. Hey Tina, uh, just to follow up on Kareem, you know, it, it's one thing to put up 30 when you've had, you know, a couple days rest and all that, but how do you put up 30 in three straight games in five days? Like, are you, and are you like exhausted? Like, how are you doing? <laughs> I have no, I didn't even have any clue about the days. Um, I'm just trying to be more efficient, trying to take better shots, uh, just get my people involved, be very selective. You know, the shots that I took in the first half, I was, I was making majority of them in the, in the second half. I thought I went cold a little bit. So I was just trying to work the ball and Ariel was stepping up and making shots and that freed me back up. But just trying to be smarter as, as I get older and, and not have to force anything, not settle for anything and um, just keep driving to the basket. And then coach T 
just told us, you know, he was complimenting your defense on Tierra, and he also mentioned the ball pressure on the perimeter. How much did you notice the, the difference in ball pressure on the perimeter, and how much does that help you when you're guarding someone like McCown on the inside? Oh, it helps, helps wonders. I mean, you know, I'm a post player myself, as you all know. So when there's ball pressure on my guards and they're not able to get the ball in to me, you know, it's, it's very tough. So that was the main thing we had to do was be very intentional on the ball pressure, um, me trying to make it as hard and push her out as possible. You know, I, I noticed that when she's on the block, you know, she's not really looking to make a move, but her bread and butter is when she's like literally on the arch and she's just able to turn. So as long as I had her on the block, I was, I was fine. Thank you. Doug? Hey, Tina. Hey. I know when, when you were in New York, we discussed a few times social justice, the Black Lives Matter movement, and obviously today is the anniversary of George Floyd's murder. Um, Coach is saying you guys have talked about it over a couple of days and plan to talk about it more in the days to come. I'm just curious your thoughts on today, obviously being a, an important day and a sad day in many ways. Yeah, you know, we're still seeking justice for those who have not received any, you know, uh, Rihanna Taylor, um, you know, George Floyd, it was very definitely a sacrificial lamb, you know, I, I wish it wasn't the, the circumstances, but it really woke everyone up. It really um, united uh, a lot of people um, and we're still seeking justice as, as I'm saying, but for us personally, and especially Natasha Cloud and just how vocal she's been and just putting everything um, in perspective, you know, she had something to say earlier today. So um, I think all of us in the league, we're still gonna keep advocating. We're gonna still just keep doing our part, keep setting the example. Um, and as you guys saw it in the bubble, I wasn't there, but that, that film that Chene Gumike was able to executive produce was, was phenomenal. So that, that's something that we're always going to keep on the front of our minds. Just It's still why we're playing and what we're doing. Thanks, Tina. Appreciate it. Tyler. Hi, Tina. Sorry to switch the tone after Doug's question. Um, yeah. But back to the game four, uh, you were the sixth player in WNBA history to have three 30-point games in a row. And this is in a league that has had a ton of great scorers and a ton of elite scorers. For you, especially from where you came with New York and now moving into the Mystics, how does it feel for you to just be able to maintain this consistency and to be able to still perform at a level that you haven't done in your career and several other WNBA stars haven't done either? Um, for me personally, you know, I'm just trying to come out and, and get wins. And like I said, be so very selective um, with my shots and just be a smarter player. Uh, you know, Coach T drafted me. So, you know, he, he knows what I'm capable of doing. He trusts me. And just him having trust and confidence in me, it, it's, you know, it, it breeds into the players around me and just them telling me to go. Shavante Zealous has been phenomenal for me. He holds me accountable when I'm settling for shots, um, when I'm not attacking. Um, and when I'm just not being aggressive. So just having people like me who wants me to be great, um, I just want to come out and just get wins for them. So I, I wish, I wish with the games I just had, I wish we would be won every single game, but we did it. But um, I'm very a hard critic of my game and I'll watch film on myself and see where I can continue to get better and get my players involved. And then another question on the defense. As a team, how do you feel like the team was able to come together tonight with the defensive effort? It was just a mindset, you know, Ariel Atkins was, was great. You know, she was very vocal, just saying we can always get to another level. Um, at some point we have to decide who we're gonna be, what we're gonna reflect, you know, what can we hold our hat on? And these two, the game, two games that we've won has been off of our defense, you know, in, in New York, which I personally took it personal, everyone knows. Um, you know, Natasha Cloud took it personal, just guarding Sabrina and SQ. So that's the same mindset that we have to have going into every game. Just, we know that our defense is definitely going to get us going with this group until God willing we're able to get Emma and, and Elena you know and not having Alicia Clark here. Thank you Tina. Zach. Hi Tina. Um, did you have a chip on your shoulder coming into this season after missing last year and people maybe not knowing how good you would be this year? Um, no. Uh, again I, I have nothing to prove you know I have things I want to accomplish. Uh, I think everyone knows my game. I think you know, like I said, I, I see it in the players' faces across from me when they have to guard me, and that says enough for me. I know the respect is there, so I have nothing to prove. You know, you guys, the media are going to write about who you want to write about and highlight who you want to. Um, I'm just going to keep doing me and keep playing my game. I, I like to think that um, the grind goes unnoticed, but the results don't, and I'm a, I'm a person who reflects that. You know, I'm always working on my game, and I'm, the results are going to show, so just trying to collect some wins. I have nothing to prove.
Thank you. Mm -hmm. And Shibata. Hello, Tina. Tokyo. Yes, thank you so much. <laughs> so my question is about your three-point shooting tonight. So I have, I think you have, you you have taken seven three-point shooter shoot shots tonight out of twenty-three entire uh, shot attempts. Mm -hmm. So are you comfortable with that number, uh, seven out of twenty-three attempts, and you made two two yeah. shots? I think. Um, just something I'm continuing to work on and still having confidence, you know, coach T encourages me to take them. Um, again, that's something to be more selective with and when to take it. And obviously knowing if Sid is next to me, Ariel, anyone who's obviously way better experienced three point shooters to, to get them a, the ball. But, um, you know, when the game is going a certain way, if, if, if I'm open, I could take a three, I'm definitely going to take it. Um, so, yeah. Okay. Thank you so much. Thanks. Thank you, Tina. All right. Kareem? Hey, hey, what's up, Ariel? Hey, how's it going? Good, congratulations. Um, Tina was just saying, you know, two games that you guys have won have been really, um, you guys have really dug in on defense. Can you kind of, and said you were even talking about that, I guess, whether it was pregame or, or maybe in practice yesterday, but can you guys, can you share some of that mentality of, um, you know, answering from a game you guys weren't happy with on Saturday and, and just what you guys did well on that side of the ball, on that side of the floor? Yeah, um, I appreciate your question. But as we all kind of know, it's been a year since George Floyd has been passed away. So if you don't mind, I want to open up with something about that just to let you guys know um, about the policing act that is in place right now. Um, and we all have the opportunity to call our senators to get it passed. Um, and if that's something that you guys are interested in, I'd really appreciate that. And if that's something that you guys want to write about, I would really appreciate if that's the biggest thing um, that you take away from whatever we talk about here today. Did you want to talk any basketball today or did you just want to talk about George Floyd? I can, I can understand. Yeah, I'd appreciate it if we only talk about George Floyd and the things that we can do to really help our community but really trying to get this policing act um, to get passed. Uh, police reform is very important for black and brown communities. And I think that's something that we should really focus on specifically today on the anniversary of his murder. Nope, that's all good. And I, and, and I guess my next question would be, can you share with some of the uh, things, you know, there's so many different measures that, you know, you guys have kind of, um, you know, put your focus towards since last year and, and I know that you guys have kind of moved on and gone to the next step of things. I guess just what's kind of in the forefront for you guys now um, besides the act that you guys are kind of working towards? Yeah, um, for me right now, it's educating myself on the things that I can help inform my community about. Um, and there's some things that we're trying to work with for the mystics that haven't been put into play yet. Um, and that's something on me that I need to be more adamant and aggressive about pushing forward. Um, so I don't have anything very specific, um, but I know that our league, specifically our Players Association, is very adamant about making sure that we're getting connected with organizations that are in our home communities of the teams. Well, cool, that's perfect, thank you. Yep. Doug? Hey Ariel, I'm curious. I mean, you, you were so eloquent, so vocal last year in the bubble when you guys didn't play that night. I'm mm -hmm. curious if you think are we any better off right now than we were at that point as a country and I need to give more attention and social justice reform and that nature? I want to say yes and no. I say yes because it's visual. We see it. We're listening. You know, we're trying to have these conversations. But I say no because the hard things need to be done. We don't want a day. We don't want a week. We don't want a month. You know, like we want things to actually be changed on the ground. We need the foundation to be cracked a little bit because this country, you know, honestly was built on power um, that's not taking care of everybody. It wasn't built with everybody in mind. So we need to break it down from the ground up and find a way to rebuild. And if we really want to talk about unity and freedom, it needs to be for all. Appreciate it. Yep. Tyler, you have a question? 
Yes, Ariel, what were, were there any added emotions today, knowing it was the anniversary and knowing what you went through last year and had to do, had, I don't want to say how to deal with, but had to address and talk about uh, throughout the entire season? Yeah, for sure. Um, but to be honest with you, this has been a stressful season for me overall, just because I'm trying to find my footing and how I help push social justice forward, um, finding my personal way. And I know I haven't been extremely vocal about it like I have in the past or even last year, um, but it's just been emotional overall. Like how do I find ways to push our community forward? How do I use the resources that I have in DC or even the resources that I have back home in Dallas? Like how do I find ways to help empower black women in our black communities and our black and brown sisters and brothers? So yes, it's emotional tonight and you know, I just want to give all my love and my prayer and my everything, you know, condolences to George Floyd's family. Um, and one verdict does not change the fact that, again, the foundation is where we need to get change done. Thank you. Thank you. Good, Kevin. You're good. Oh, uh, it's no secret, today marks a day that uh, George Floyd was brutally murdered by, at the hands of police uh, in which they were finally convicted. I think in the last however many years, there's only been one conviction and that was this one. So what I'm gonna do is not talk about the game because the focus still needs to be on social reform and social justice, especially for black and brown communities um, and discriminatory policing towards black and brown communities. So what I'm gonna do is tell y'all to write about people reaching out to the state senators we need to ban chokeholds and other restrictive maneuvers. We need to end qualified immunity for all government actors. Don't back down, keep raising your voice, tell Congress we need better accountability policies to meaningful address rampant systemic racism in policing. Ban racial and religious profiling. Prohibit no knock warrants, Breonna Taylor, say your name. Mandate a federal standard that, mandate a federal standard that use of force only be used when necessary. Demilitarize our police. Develop a national public database of police misconduct. Strengthen the federal government's ability to hold officers accountable for rights violations while on duty. I hope y'all stay safe. We're still in the middle of a pandemic and I hope you focus on what today should be focused on, not this game. Um, we're talking about black and brown people's lives. So thank y'all, stay safe, go Mystics. Wait, Tash, Jimmy have some questions for you about that. I'm not answering any questions. No questions. Okay. All right, guys. You heard it. All right, everybody. Thank you for joining us. Uh, we are off tomorrow.